Stephen, we obviously think that technology is key to many, many things, including perhaps the recovery of uh, the world economy. And at Wharton, we buy into technology and we mm -hmm. use technology a lot. Uh, we just started a, an institute for interactive media and we're very involved with Knowledge at Wharton, which is reaching 1.3 million people as a knowledge portal around the world. But you're the expert <laughs> in technology. And uh, what do you see as the developments in, in technology and innovation in the next few years? You know, a, a couple things. I think um, clearly the way that we interact with technology is going to evolve continuously and dramatically. So how you express yourself. Today we're tied down to keyboards and mice and so forth, but we think the way people express themselves and are able to interact with technology expressively is going to be something that, that really evolves in the years ahead. We also think that the, the, the way that people connect is evolving. We're seeing this every day, whether it's people using products like Facebook or MySpace to connect in a different mm -hmm. way, or in a corporate setting, you're seeing the use of all sorts of technology to bridge geographical and cultural divides. So a lot of emphasis going into how we can establish seamless and secure connections between people. But I think one of the, the biggest trends in technology is the degree to which technology can help you gain insight. You know, you and I, when we were writing, you know, our term papers, we were off to the, the library, we were pouring through books and trying to extract information. The students here at Wharton today, while well, they're going to live search or a competitive product to, you know, draw information out of the internet, I think in the future, insight will, will actually be not something you have to chase, but it'll be something that comes to you and in the context of what you're trying to do and the work that you're trying to accomplish. So you might be preparing for a meeting. Well, in preparation for the meeting, perhaps the systems have been helpful enough to provide you the insight you need for that meeting without you having to do the manual labor of information searching and gathering. So I think insights will be a, a big part of it going forward. That's great. Yeah, I think it's been a while since I've been in a library. <laughs> and, As you and think you, about it, yes, yeah, that's right. You bring the in information to you, and you're going further even and saying the information will come to come me to just you. as that's I right. need it. That's great. If you think about education and uh, educational technology, uh, where do you see that going? Uh, certainly, we're into blended technology. Uh, as one uh, vehicle, and we do uh, a lot of building of simulations and, and games uh, that we use in class. Yes. Um, you mentioned issues of how you bring your various communities together because students may be more likely to use Facebook and, mm -hmm. and faculties on email. Um, where do you see educational technology going? Well, I think it's interesting. I often get asked, you know, what will technology do for education? Mm -hmm. And I think you're on to the right point. It's what will education teach us about the needs for future technology? Because the next generation of our business leaders, they are establishing the new patterns of how people want to communicate, how they collaborate, their expectations of being able to gather information, to, to process that. And I, th I know within Microsoft, we spend a lot of time understanding the patterns within educational institutions amongst students in particular to help us understand where technology might be going mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at something like a Facebook or a MySpace, you quickly realize that this generation of students fully expects to enter the workforce and have that style of socially connected communications a part of how they do their work. Email is not good enough for them. Mm -hmm. And so as we try and predict the future of business technology at Microsoft, we have to take those types of things into account. So we draw on education a great deal to help us define that future. I mean, the development of innovation is, is, is so very, very critical. and. Um, not all innovation succeed, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, sometimes some very great innovation doesn't succeed initially and then eventually diffuses or someone comes up with a better application which does diffuse. Um, any thoughts on, on that uh, as to how Microsoft uh, thinks about how we break through and get fast acceleration of new technology? Sure, because this is an age-old challenge. I mean, we can have researchers in a lab coming up with the greatest things in sliced sure. bread, and maybe people aren't interested. And of course, part of the answer to that question lies with those people. So as part of your research processes, your development processes, your commercialization processes, the amount of investment required with the individuals, with the consumers, with the business people, to make sure that you are actually adapting to what they expect and doing it in a way that they will adopt as they go mm -hmm. forward. One of the important trends of technology today is very much about the consumerization of IT, where 
there, there are patterns forming within the consumer world of how people want to use technology that we can learn from and draw into the business setting as well. Mm -hmm. And so you see many of the great trends in business technology being driven from what people are expecting or experiencing in the consumer world. And that's something that we all have to be very sensitive to because the advent of certain devices or technology being thrust into a, a corporate setting, it's starting quite often in the consumer environment. Mm -hmm. So the lesson there is make sure you're spending time with those individuals, ensuring the user experience, the quality of interaction, the value proposition all up works correctly. Right. And then there's a notion that the consumer doesn't really know what he or she wants. Yes. Um, and so then it's a matter of perhaps it's iterative and you present Absolutely. ideas. And they don't know what they don't know sometimes. Right. And I know in, in my history, there was a product we were introducing at a previous company I was at. And we were told consistently in the user studies, this was not going to land. And yet, as we began to introduce it, it was quickly embraced. And people said, this is a new way of solving that problem. Mm -hmm. Right. Microsoft has been a smart follower very often. And that is one theory of how you conduct business. And instead of being out front, taking the risks, you, um, you come in early <coughs> behind whoever innovates. Is that a deliberate philosophy of, of Microsoft? And is that a philosophy going forward? Or are you going to break that pattern? Or maybe you don't agree with the pattern. So I'm going to, I'm going to challenge the, the okay, basis of the good, question. Good, good. Um, indeed, you know, there are times when Microsoft has been a fast follower. And we have, I believe, the intellectual integrity to say, hey, there's a different way, there's a better idea, we should be embracing that direction, and mm -hmm. we should be following if that's appropriate. So those times absolutely exist, and all businesses should, should recognize that. At the same time, Microsoft has the world's largest private R&D organization anywhere. Mm -hmm. We invest over $9 billion a year in innovation, in product development. And so when you look at what drives our growth, some of it is you know, some traditional products like Windows and Office, but the mm -hmm. fastest growing portions of my business are around brand new innovations in collaboration, in unified communications, in business applications and others. And those innovation are definitely driving a lot of the growth of the company. Mm -hmm. So I think the way to perceive Microsoft is a company that that drives very hard on innovation, but at the same time is very comfortable saying, you know what, there's times where we need to be a fast follower because we missed a trend or you know, there's a better way and we're comfortable you know, pursuing that as well. So I think right. it's a blend of both That's that is great. appropriate. So there is a lot of innovation at, at Microsoft and, and maybe sometimes you're so dominant in Windows or in Office products that it, it hides all the other innovation that's going on. You know, within my division, um, the Microsoft Business Division, people think first and foremost about Office. Mm -hmm. But when they hear that we have products like SharePoint or Unified Communications or our Dynamics product line, all of which are growing at double-digit rates, all of which are more than a billion dollars in revenue. I mean, anywhere else in the world, each one of those small areas be would be com company. companies all by themselves. And yet, because of the scope and breadth of the company, people say, oh, it's Windows, it's Office. There's so much more that goes on at Microsoft. And that, that's a big part of what makes it an exciting place to, to work. Sounds great. Very good. Thank Wonderful. you, Dean. Thank you. Pleasure.